Senate and those who would actually be somewhat suited as executive personnel are not man enough to enforce what is right because they do not dare to fend themselves against their party comrades perhaps because they fear for their posts. Quetzal says that is correct, but we should not talk about these things because they deal with politics. Billy says nevertheless, it is so, and I think that we do not politicize when we identify the errors of the governments. Quetzal says that is indeed correct, but the earth human still tends toward understanding things falsely. Thus, let us turn again to other things. Billy says that's fine with me, also, I have a question that has nothing to do with the whole area of political crap I calculated the date of the 11th of May to be the time when Bernadette should give birth to her son, based on her statements. At the same time another date, or several, come up, so namely the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of May 1982. Which one of those is right? On my side, I conclude the 11th of May because this is the nearest possibility. Quetzal says some mistakes must have slipped into you, but this is understandable because of the condition of your nerves. You do know that you must have healthy and functioning nerves for such calculations. If that isn't the case, then there will be mistakes that you cannot grasp or recognize, which is actually proven in the difference of the days May 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. The first date, indeed, lies the closest to the truth. But unfortunately, this is also not true. The birth will take place on the 9th of May in the early afternoon hours, shortly after 2.00 p.m. Billy says I know that my nerves are, once again, not quite in order as they should be. Already, I repeatedly wanted to get myself behind some tasks, but it does not and did not work out for me. Quetzal says that is correct because the proper functioning of your nerves is extremely necessary for your work. But now, I should report to you further of the upcoming events because that is our current main topic. Billy says it is, yes. Then maybe you can also tell me how are things now with the filming? I mean, what will happen in regards to our film, which is supposed to be made by the Americans about our mission, etc.? Can you give me any information about this? Quetzal says I already explained to you at an earlier date that this work must be completed no later than the end of 1982 because after that, you will have no more time for it. For this reason, we have set all the responsible persons in America under our pertinent purpose-oriented impulse radiations, through which they will be led to work more intensively. And as things now look, it seems that around the 25th of April 1982, this film work will be started, so the film will come about in the foreseeable time. Billy says I simply can't understand why, starting in 1983, I should have no time anymore for the filming. Quetzal says besides the additional upcoming routine work that will come about from the film itself people in Japan will also begin to be interested in our entire cause in the largest measure, so much additional work will expect you from this. Also, even more film work will be incorporated into it if our calculations prove themselves as given. Now, however, we should not speak of these matters anymore because, in relation to world events of the coming time, there is still a lot to explain, for example, in the middle of 1982, the time will be reached by the peoples of the earth which will decisively establish guidelines that will make the fate of the humans nearly unalterable. But even though these guidelines will appear, the eyes of the earth people will remain closed and blinded, like also their sense of truth. Mainly it concerns, in relation to this, the criminal interests of the will-be statesmen begin, who will commit a further terrible crime under the eyes of the world public, without that the rest of the world intervenes and dents the terrible killings. In the middle of 1982, Begin will demonstrate his true character with full power when he allows an attack with war gewalt on the capital of Beirut in the country of Lebanon and allows it to be destroyed for the most part, whereby many thousands of innocent people, women, men, and children, will be killed. The murderly degenerate Menachem Begin will thereby give excuses that will find attention in the un and in the rest of the world, although, 
Behind Begin's actions lies hidden nothing else than the lunatic greed for the spilling of human blood as well as the lust for sovereign power over the entire country and all its ethnic groups. Billy says he is a cowardly pig and a scoundrel without an equal. My reflection about him has revealed that he is a damn rotten creature who lives entirely criminally, is vindictive, and boundless in his cowardice. He is not only a zero, an absolute washout, and a naught, but in addition an unparalleled scoundrel, and moreover a psychopath of the same size as Khomeini, the insane Ayatollah in Iran. Begin is in the same sick hospital as Khomeini cowardly, deceitful, mean, selfish, power-hungry, psychopathic, validity-addicted and domineering, a megalomaniac and who is otherwise burdened with all the malignancies into which a person could have lapsed. He is an absolute degenerate and is undignified of life. He is a person who could never develop the ability to live honestly and become a human being an absolute zero, who wants to hide his absolute inability to live through cowardice and lust for blood whereby the responsible persons of all earthly governments are stupid enough not to recognize this fact, and so, they grant him leave instead of bringing him and his power addiction to reason, in order to dissolve his power and suffocate his power thinking completely. But the earth people and especially the responsible rulers are so blinded and stupid that they do not recognize the truth. Thus, also not the actual sense of Begin's actions and his associated infamous and cunning plots, which truly, have only fully fledged through his office as it was with the treacherous criminal acts of Emmanuel's traitor, namely of Judah Ariat. Begin's ancestors, already at their olden times, were probably criminals of all types and kinds, who drank friendship with their potential or assumed enemies, at times in order to them treacherously murder them, to slaughter them when they were drunk out of their senses and defenseless. And after they had libelously falsified, like Israel, their own chronicle, where Emmanuel's traitor actually wasn't a disciple like Judas Iscariot, Emmanuel's disciple Judas Iscariot was then placed as the traitor until the present day, while the true traitor, the high priest's son, Judah Iscariot, is not even mentioned in the hypocritical chronicle, so that the real traitor to ye Manuel's assassination should be innocent. Quetzal says helpless anger speaks from your words there, my friend. Anger over the fact that you preach the truth to the earth people for nothing and that, thereby, this criminal would be politician can continue to murder under the eyes of the earth population and realize his goals, namely, to seize the rule of the entire country more and more to himself. But you can do and are really able to do, nothing in regards to this through the dissemination of the truth because the murderous and human blood demanding death power of the heavy criminal has already become too great, so only the fulfillment of the prophecies can still bring a change in the bloodthirsty rule and power addiction of this degenerate. His country Israel, so says a prophecy, will be destroyed in the distant future from the lands of the East through war and death, when the fighters of the East will wade knee deep in the blood of the people of Israel. And all this just because the leaders of all world governments are just as blind and cowardly as the populations of many countries of the earth in order that they would put a stop to the criminal, murderous, and human bloodthirsty, would-be politicians, and criminal politicians in Israel. Billy says the world will have to learn what snakes it is nourishing in its bosom. Quetzal says that will certainly be the case, but only then, when everything has become inevitable. Unfortunately, the megalomania and truth denial of the earth humans allows them to recognize the truth only too late. Thus, in the middle of 1982 it won't be enough that the criminal begin will lead a murderous and brutal war in Beirut against the Palestinians, but this criminal will continue in even further and harder measures because he will never give up his plans for territorial reign. So not only in Beirut will many thousands of innocents, children, women, and men, die but also again after that, in the future when this criminal would be great further pursues his plans for country conquest, while the leaders of the world still stupidly, incomprehensibly and even leniently watch him, along with those of the nation, which still believes in a reparation for the sufferings of the Jews during the Second World War.
These believers do not understand that a reparation for the infamous actions of the Third Reich is impossible and that such a reparation can never be made to the surviving relatives and descendants of those who were murdered and slaughtered in the Third Reich between 1939 and 1945 through the indirect orders of the Thal Society by Adolf Hitler and his generals and other leading powers, etc. A reparation could only take place with the victims themselves, which, however, is impossible. But a reparation to the surviving relatives and descendants, etc., is completely misdirected because most of these people live in hatred and vindictiveness, as well as with cravings for power and immaterialism, for the purposes of seizing the rule of the country to themselves and subjugating, exploiting, and enslaving the rest of the humanity of the country. Thus, the large mass of the earth people live in the wrong mania for an unwarranted reparation for the suffered disgraceful deeds done to their ancestors and predecessors, with which the earth people nourish a very vicious, poisonous, and life-threatening snake in their bosoms. So it will happen that in the month of July 1982, the Palestinian refugees, expelled out of their rightful homeland, should be forced through the accomplished war events released by Begin, the land that was was home to them and which belonged to them for millennia and which brought much death and destruction to them, to have to recognize it as Israel as a state. Billy says that just cannot be true. Quetzal says unfortunately, this will be so certain, as Begin will implement the expulsion of the Palestinians from Beirut with murder and destruction, without that the responsible in countries of the earth and to earth humanity will undertake something about it, or recognize what the actual plans in the criminal Begin's brain really are, concerning snatching the rule over the land to himself. Billy says thus, this should also be the time when Iran will begin a renewed major offensive against Iraq, right? Quetzal says apparently, you have dealt with these matters a little more closely? Billy says I have, yes. Quetzal says good, yes, in the month of July, under the supreme command of the insane Ayatollah Khomeini, the Iranians will drive forward the until then, approximately two-year war again to a climax, whereby on both sides, with the Iranians as well as with the Iraqis, many thousands of people will again die. Billy says there is simply no end to the insanity. Quetzal says you know why. Billy says yes, but how is it actually with the disasters around the middle of the year 1982, which are evoked by the weather and climate, etc.? Quetzal says at least during the month of July, very bad things will happen in this relation. Your homeland, Switzerland, will also be stricken by the heaviest of storms, particularly the areas of the Jura. Concerning this, bad things will also happen around your center, whereby you yourselves will get away with minor damages at this time. Particularly, Switzerland and France will be met with severe hail, whereby also very wild waters will then appear as a result of heavy thunderstorms that will destroy crops, buildings, roads, fields, forests and meadows, in addition to many other things. This will happen after bright sunshine will have appeared for only a few weeks. What falls in various places as too much water to the earth will lack in other places, but then afterward heavy thunderstorms and floods and destruction will also occur there. In Japan alone, storms and floodwaters will appear in the area of Nagasaki, which will cost many hundreds of human lives. Thousands of houses will be destroyed, which will also be the case in various other countries along with immeasurable additional damages to crops, to animal life forms, and to everything that people have created. Billy says then there's a pretty bad year. Quetzal says that will be the case, that is correct. Also, new diseases will make an appearance with the earth people, and at times even epidemics will break out in some countries. But this still won't be enough, because at this point in time, only the first half of the year 1982 will have passed. Billy says then, after the first half of the year, there are still quite evil things to be expected. 
Quetzal says that is correct, but I would like to again report chronologically about this because many of the upcoming events after the first half of the year 1982 represent precursors or further developments of the insanity of the Earth people, which have already begun or will still begin and which will drag themselves into the year 1983 and even into later decades. Billy says then please tell me about these things in order. But before this, I would like to ask you whether you can answer one more question for me that is still on my chest. Quetzal says then ask. Billy says in the coming years and decades, there will again appear more frequent passages of comets including those such as Halley's Comet, which can practically be observed in the sky, at times, even in broad daylight. Now, this is my question when you took me in 1975 on the Great Voyage, I saw beyond our solar system and planetary system the immense belt of material of frozen acids, rocks, adonidon, and lifeless planets of which some were quite large. Like the asteroid belt beyond the orbit of Mars, this belt also moves around the Sun but very far outside of Pluto's orbit. At that time, you explained to me that celestial bodies of all kinds pass through this belt, such as dark stars and other space bodies, and that every now and then, smaller or larger bodies tear out from this belt and enter into another orbit around the Sun, which can then partly be observed as comets from the Earth and, thus, can be seen. If I remember correctly, you told me at that time that on the one hand, this belt was still widely unknown to the Earth people in its magnitude but that on the other hand, more would soon be discovered, but this apparently hasn't happened yet because until now, I haven't seen, heard, or read anything about this. Furthermore, you explained that this material belt consists of the remains of the formation of the solar system and of immigrated materials from space, etc. Now, I wonder how high the percentage of comets is that appears in our solar system and that arises from this material belt beyond Pluto's orbit. See Existent Life in the Universe by Billy, Aquarius Time Publishing Company. Quetzal says it has probably escaped your attention, but this belt was in the meantime discovered and actually by a Dutch astronomer named La Oort. In accordance with its discovery, the discovered belt will be called the Oort cloud in Earth's scientific circles, but that's about it, because the connections of this belt to the comets of the Sol system are still, to my knowledge, foreign and unknown to the Earth scientists. But the truth is, that about 97% of the Sol system comets arise from this belt, like also the planetary bodies passing by this belt upset the trajectories of the materials through their attractive forces, so then these suddenly scramble, which removes isolated larger and smaller objects, pushing them into new orbits around the solar system, where they then appear as comets, while others fly out far from the sun into free space in order to disappear somewhere in the vastness of the universe, often also as migrant dark planet which will partly be captured again by bigger celestial bodies as satellites and then orbit them far away from these new mother stars. But others will rush uncontrollably as dark migrant objects through space. Billy says then only around 3% of all comets in the Sol system stem from outside of it and from somewhere in space. Quetzal says that is correct. Billy says at that time, you also said that the largest part of all meteorites not only whizzes through our system from the asteroid belt, but that the, by far, larger part comes from the two belts beyond Pluto. Those space projectiles are then also in overwhelming numbers, which fell on moons and planets and into the sun and which would still continue to crash down even further on, while only a smaller part originates from the asteroid belt. Quetzal says that is correct but you were to remain silent about that particularly with regard to the second belt. Billy says I know, but I remember well that you told me that I may speak about this after 1980, because then the scientists of the Earth would have discovered these facts themselves. This time is over, even if I have heard nothing like that about the belts. Quetzal says that is also correct. 
The sense of my words was not to criticize you but rather I just wanted to point out that we explained to you back then that you were not allowed to announce your knowings before 1980. Billy says that's also how I comprehended it. But tell me now Halley's Comet and the Comet Roland, for example, those come as projectiles from deep space, right? In any case, that's how I understood it at the time. Quetzal says that is also correct. They belong to the 3% of foreign system comets. Billy says so one could say that 97% of all comets are co-inhabitants of the Sol system. Quetzal says if you want to state it in such a way, then that is correct, even though we see it differently, and I must explain that these comets stem from other systems in space. Billy says of course in accordance with your statement that each star and each planet with its own satellites represent their own system, which is why you speak of, for example, Jupiter or Saturn or Uranus, etc. as other systems, but nevertheless not about our solar system. This is known to me, but it still causes confusion with us because for us, the solar system is called as such with all its planets and their satellites and including the unsuccessful small suns Saturn and Jupiter. In general, we only speak of the Sun with its planets as being a system, while we do not speak of planets and their moons as being systems. Quetzal says the necessities about this were already explained at an earlier time. Billy says of course, I think that it was necessary to address this fact again. Quetzal says I understand, you probably think of misunderstandings. Billy says exactly. My questions are now answered so now you can go on and continue speaking of those things that relate to earthly affairs in the future. I interrupted you at the concerns about the nasty thunderstorms in 1982 as well as at the concerns of diseases and epidemics. Quetzal says that is correct, and exactly about these things. I still have to give some explanations especially from the month of July of 1982, the heaviest thunderstorms will appear which will cause major damages in Europe. Switzerland will also be affected by this, as well as Germany and Austria and various other European countries. The destruction of houses and other buildings, roads, fields, vineyards, crops, railroads, and vehicles, etc. will appear whereby also floods will arise, which will be triggered by torrent-like thunderstorms. In many parts of Switzerland, immense damages will be caused by the thunderstorms, particularly in the Jura region, as well as in the area of Andelfingen. Unfortunately, human lives will also be lamented over, both through lightning strikes and indirect causes of the flood thunderstorms. From these torrential and flood thunderstorms your center will also not remain spared, which is also why I give the advice to secure the entire area as good as possible in view of the coming water ingresses, as well as everything else that needs to be done to avoid damage caused by these expected thunderstorms. Billy says that is faster said than done because it will probably be like always, namely that the insight and commitment for this work only occurs when the damage has already been incurred. Unfortunately, before that, it doesn't work out. I also know of exposed locations where damages may occur, especially landslides, etc., but one will only be able to fix these up when it's too late or almost too late. Quetzal says this is known to me. It is indeed so, that until now you still must supervise and arrange everything and also that the control is still with you, as well as the mastering that it is even being worked rapidly. It can be said that a true and rapid work performance can only occur in less than four group members in the center, and a reasonable work performance only truly comes about if you yourself lend a hand, but then, if you do the work entirely, a greater performance appears than what is the case with three normally working men in a joint working method. You actually replace, in connection with this, three strong and labor-conscious men. Billy says you exaggerate a little, my son, better go on now with your predictions. Quetzal says as you wish on around August 15, 1982, South Italy will again be smitten by an earthquake because this part of Italy will not be coming to rest for some time. But specifically, Switzerland and Germany must also endure a lot of unrest but in another area. 
so as it concerns epidemics, especially in these two countries, there will be all kinds of unrest and suffering be spread by sexual offenders as well as through the stupid audacious behavior and degeneracy of young girls. The year 1982 will be for Switzerland and for Germany a year during which, particularly from about the middle of the year, many of the school girls and teenage girls, adventurously and without the knowledge of the parents, go away from home to travel like gypsies through the land and countries, while many others will be seduced by sexual offenders, will be raped and beaten and will be brought to death. Thus, the year 1982 will be a pretty bad time for Switzerland and Germany with respect to this, also in view of the further mass killings, whereby particularly family mass killings are to appear. Elsewhere, a new and dangerous epidemic appears which is triggered by the shamelessness and sexual greed and degeneration of the earth people, who have already lost themselves in unbridled and animalistic satisfaction of sexual lust and in their degenerated impulses. Animals are, in relation to this, truly much more developed than the earth human because animals have their mating season according to nature, while the earth human, in this regard, suffers from an abnormal degeneration and from thoughts produced by sexual greed, and also lives and acts accordingly. This will, however, have its consequences because such violations against the laws of nature always bring bad consequences. And so, it will be that a new epidemic sexually transmitted disease, which is already rife in the US, will be brought into Europe and be spread. This is a very malignant form of immunodeficiency that can't be fought against for the time being and, thus, will be incurable and will demand many human lives over decades. Billy says the prospects are so nice for the people of this world. You have also told me back then, during my great voyage, about a serious illness that should be revealed in connection with space flight. You then said something about the fact that the people of the Earth would very soon, through their space flight experiments, find out that they could not pursue this primitive kind of space flight that is pursued by them without taking severe damage. If I remember correctly, you then told me that through this primitive earthly kind of space flight, the danger of an incurable illness exists for the would-be astronauts and that all those who had flown in space capsules above the Earth's ozone layer were already infected. You explained back then that something will happen with the brains of these people. Quetzal says that is correct because at that time, we explained to you the dangers of space flight because the conquering of interstellar space isn't as simple as the Earth people imagines it. The free space hides many dangers in itself, which the Earth person is still in nowhere aware of. In particular, the very dangerous kind of space conquering, as is pursued by the Earth people, releases damage to the health in the person. First and foremost, the Earth people have no knowledge about the hazardous, body damaging, as well as organ damaging radiations, which prevail in all of space and pass through it. On the other hand, the realization also escapes them that the human body cannot cope with weightlessness on a permanent basis, which is why it already begins to take on physical and organic damage after 70 hours of a weightless state. If the Earth person, as well as any other race to be classified as space mastering, wants to pursue space flight, then the spacecraft equipment must be adapted to the given conditions in all respects, as well as the space suits for the life forms themselves. Space flight equipment and space suits must be safeguarded and made resistant by a special insulation shielding layer with regard to the various body damaging and organ damaging space radiations and space vibrations. This is the most important factor for the preservation of life in space for the human, and so it is also the most important factor for the conservation of organic and physical health of the people who move through space with space-competent missiles or in protective suits. The second and equally important factor in this regard is based on gravity and is to be observed with equally great importance as with the shielding against the space radiations and space vibrations. If these factors are not taken into account, 
and thus, the spacecraft and protective suits of the people are not prepared accordingly in a way that the missiles and protective suits are made resistant against the outside influences of the radiations and vibrations by special insulation shields and that the spacecraft and protective suits are equipped with their own gravitational fields, then the body and all organs and bones of the space-traveling people will take damage to the health. Radiations, vibrations and the sorts, unprotected flying objects and also such overalls, as well as the weightlessness of interstellar space led, in the very first place, to health damages in the brain and in the bones of humans and many other life forms. These, together with many other forms of injury to health which spread to the whole body and to all organs. Thus, if the human life form is not protected in space by special shields and by artificial gravitational fields against the space radiations and space vibrations and against the weightlessness, then he will suffer health damage which, in a stark case, usually leads to death. The first severe reaction of the brain injury that I mentioned, for example, leads to barely detectable brain swelling in very minor cases, which will after some time, lead to thought and action uncertainty and then inevitably result in reaction loss, such as, for example, the sudden loss of control of a vehicle or aircraft or the appearance of completely faulty actions against all reason. These kinds of minor cases already occur with those people who, even on the earth, linger in containers where weightlessness is produced, but on the other hand, they also appear in all those earth people who leave the earth for only a very short duration and get out above the earthly ozone layer. Truly, all of that may only be done then, when the necessary precautions are sufficient enough, otherwise, the health damages are inevitable. However, if a human or any other life form lingers for a very long time, such as many months or years, unprotected in weightlessness in space then the initially developing brain swelling of an inflamed form will suddenly develop in reverse sequence, by which brain atrophy then develops, as with weak thinking and elderly people. Even the brain substance itself suffers a loss, thus, the entire brain mass passes through this phenomenon of a pathological nature. This symptom of illness, and it evidently deals with such, is caused on the one hand by the uninhibited influence of space vibrations and space radiations of various kinds, as well as by weightlessness. The illness originating from these factors inflames the brain substances and the brain itself, after which a new illness factor rapidly arises, which expresses itself as a decrease of brain activity through a kind of palsy of cerebral substance which then leads to the general shrinkage of total brain mass which can no longer be stopped by human and medical and other similar means. If the person lingers long enough unprotected and weightlessly in space then the brain contraction ultimately leads to the point where the person loses the absolute control over himself, his thinking, and actions and life. The ultimate end, then, is insanity and death. Billy says exactly, that is what you explained to me back then, but how long will it still take before the people of the earth recognize the first facts of these matters? Quetzal says it will be the time around the middle of 1982. But in truth, only a few facts will be fathomed initially, while the final or, at least, the further scope of the effective space threats will be recognized only much later after the initial space flights have already claimed the lives of Earth people. Billy says a question regarding this but no, I better leave it. Quetzal says then I will give further explanations regarding the events to be anticipated on Earth. I explained to you that Israel will pursue a very sinister game of a political character, with regard to the Palestinians as well as with respect to the ambitions for territorial rule. So after the Israeli expulsion of the Palestinians from Beirut the next step will be that for the first time, Israel will officially stand against the demands and ordinances of those that have, until then, given all the determinant assistance to this country, so that Israel, under the leadership of Begin, could even carry out its criminal and murderous actions to the time of the Palestinian expulsion from Beirut. Thus, after the expulsion of Palestinians, Israel will set themselves against the Americans in an open form, because by then, 
the Begin's leadership will recognize that they will have in the meantime already safeguarded their murderous political power on Earth so far that this step can be dead. When this event occurs, it will concern the demands of the American President Reagan towards Israel, at which Israel will gloatingly turn a deaf ear because its murderous political power will have actually reached a point which allows it to justify these actions before those who are blind and ignorant. But America and the rest of the world will nevertheless continue to stand by Israel, still not recognizing what evil game of murderous plans for territorial reign Israel actually conceives. Billy says and in Iran, how do things go on over there, at this point in time? Abomination is going on over there, which scoffs at each humanness and at every men's sane. As I reckoned years ago. Not only that pregnant women and children are executed there, but also raping of women will take place before these are shot. Quetzal says that, too, will become known in about the month of July of 1982 or else during the month of August of 1982. Thereby, it will certainly be concealed for the time being that these women and girls will not only be raped and then murdered, but that they must suffer agonizing torture before, during, and after the rapes whereby also their marks of femininity will be slit or chopped up and cut off with knives. Translators note the following lines through line number 317 are very graphic and further describe the subject that has just been introduced. If the reader decides to read these lines, he or she should know that a proper warning has been given. If the reader does not wish to read more details about this, then he or she should resume reading at Maya's comment after line number 317. Billy says cruel pigs, they even maltreat the breasts and genitals of these moribunds with knives. Damn pigs. Quetzal says this special kind of torture, as the Iranian Revolution Guards and the Khomeini henchmen call it and which is legalized in such a way that the moribund women and girls, who are even of children's ages, are being massacred alive, will not only take place in the year 1982 alone, for already at present, they use this along with many other tortures. But we have already spoken of this at length, at least in terms of the executions of women and girls in pregnant states, etc. But the world should truthfully know what kind of horror is actually going on in Iran. Among thousands of events relating to this, I can report examples that I observed myself over my monitors and that boosted within me the naked horror. I saw a girl of less than 11 years of age put to death in a dim dwelling in the most horrific manner. Already physically developed as a woman, the child was outstretched by hands and feet and tied to a hard couch, after which nine men then assaulted her, raping her in the most brutal way. While the last of these criminal and inhuman creatures assaulted the girl, Another suddenly pulled out a knife and minced the child's young breasts, while the rapist cried out voluptuously and lustfully bathed in the squirting blood. However, that was only the prelude to an even more terrible end because now, the rest of the brutish creatures dropped onto the child, while another knife penetrated into the vagina of the child and jerked, slitting highly to the belly, so that the intestines poured out. Another cut the child's ears off and another worked off his murder and blood intoxication rage with a knife to the thighs of the girl. The hell of a truly ghastly blood intoxication took place, before ultimately, one of the brutish men put his pistol to the temple of the child and carried out the final execution. From this you can see that in Iran, under the dirty cover of religion, things truly take place from which the rest of the ignorant world could learn the horror. But still for a long time, Earth humanity will have no knowledge of these horrific operations, and when it should someday be the case, nevertheless, the Earth people, on the one hand, are so far removed from the places of these events, and on the other hand, it doesn't concern them, while their senses are already so jaded against murder, rape, death, cruelty, and bestial killings of human beings that they simply cannot be deeply affected by these facts and events but simply superficially take note of them, not worrying about it further, and they indulge cheerfully in the joys and glories and in the blinking of an eye of their daily lives because they think what the heck, it doesn't concern them, and the dead suffer no more pain. Billy says damn it once more, 
because the living persons who are brought to death, they lived before that, and before their death they had to suffer these inhuman atrocities. Quetzal says that is correct. Billy says I think that in this regard, it doesn't change anything, that those who have been killed and will still be killed in Iran, that these have lifted up this mass killer Khomeini into the sky and have regarded him as a god and savior. Quetzal says that is correct because it does not alter the fact that these murders, rapes, cruelties and inhumanities should have never been allowed to be committed. Billy says and those who do it anyway, they are a thousand times worse than ordinary murderers. For such creatures, there isn't even a designation in any language. Not even for those murderous henchmen, who simply execute death sentences through judges. These killers on command are also very much worse than any killer who is executed by them. Quetzal says you speak a very true word. Billy says I wish I could change all this madness, there ought to be a possibility. Quetzal says unfortunately there isn't one, at least not in the sense that a sudden end could be set for these murders and other inhuman atrocities. There would only be one solution in the long run, and in fact through a transnational party, therefore an international peace combat force and a union with enough members in every country of the earth, which would have ascendance over every other party. But this peace combat troop and party, I use this designation for better understanding, should be apolitical in every form and relation and be uniformly aimed, through spiritual leadership and peace combat to steer the population of each country into the life correct courses and into the necessary knowledge. Truthfully, such a peace combat troop and party would have to be a uniformly aligned free peace combat community whereby the framework of the UN and NATO in this amended sense would be exactly right. But it cannot be avoided that these organizations and the community would have a top spirit leadership with sub-leaderships well informed in the spiritual teaching, after which everything could be truly steered in a creationally given form through these leading forces. Thus, no political machinations must arise in the sense as these are usual on earth and which lead to wars, murders and manslaughter and revolutions. Also, terrorism and anarchy, crime, riots and demonstrations, etc. would have to be prevented by this, in that all earth people would have to be treated uniformly and be incorporated into a uniform order and giving of rights. Billy says that is easily said because again and again, Crazy extremists of a terroristic character emerge in the smallest groups who organize kidnappings, who storm and occupy embassies, schools, and government buildings, murdering people in order to cash in millions of amounts of extorted funds, so that they can make for themselves a happy and comfortable life. And the responsible of the countries even help this riffraff in that they, on the one hand, yield to the blackmailing, and on the other hand, even carry out similar actions, whereby it is still given to them that they have and exercise the damned power to provoke wars, whereby, in this regard, they can even engage the damned religions in this, in particular the Christian churches, who themselves really do not want to have peace but by all means seek and advocate that the countries of the earth produce war armies and war material, accumulate and stockpile these, in order to be able to wage war, always under the guise of the strange and crazy shouting that, indeed, peace according to God's order, and additionally, love must prevail on earth. If one then addresses these idiots and power twerps on this fact, then they say as a response that each country needs an army with adequate weapons in order to be able to ward off an invading enemy. This is a matchless idiocy, for if all countries uniformly have peaceful intentions and act accordingly, then no country needs armies and weapons of war. Then, a regular safety army with appropriate weapons would be sufficient, in order to be prepared for contingencies, such as if inhumane life forms from outer space should undertake attempts toward world domination etc. Nevertheless, I must say that your idea of a worldwide free peace combat community within the framework mentioned would be very good, and, indeed, should be pursued, but 